Good morning. This is Arlen Sudman, Chief Commodities Economist at Stonex at about a quarter till nine in the morning on this Friday, November the 7th. Uh, rare earth minerals may again be a problem for the trade agreement with China. We continue to monitor the situation. And as I've indicated previously, rare earth minerals and magnets are still the biggest hot spot in the tensions between China and the United States. These are the products that are essential components for much of today's high-tech manufacturing economy, everything from cell phones to uh, F-150 pickup trucks. Um, everything in between almost requires rare earth minerals and magnets in some part of the process. And so that's an essential part of our economy, not just our economy, but Europe's economy, much of the West's economy going forward. And China has been limiting the exports of these. Um, but not only that, of the manufacturing of defense weapons, today's advanced defense weapons, these rare earth minerals and magnets are essential for that. So if you go back about 30 years ago, um, China started implementing a strategy at that point to achieve a monopoly on the mining and processing of rare earth minerals. Now, these products are found around the world. They're probably more concentrated in China than just about anywhere else, but you can find them in many parts of the world. But they're very dirty, let me put this way, they're very expensive to mine and to process, and they're very environmentally dirty to do so as well. And China, with its cheap labor, offered to be the ones to do that. And they started buying up companies overseas who were doing it, and then like what they did here in the United States, and then shut them down. And eventually they achieved the level where they had a monopoly on 90% of the processed rare earth minerals and magnets in the world that are so essential to our today's economy and to our defense. And so they started implementing the strategy then earlier this year of starting to limit the shipments of those to countries around the world and started implementing this, uh, an application and licensing procedure. Now, they further tightened down in October, the first week of October, they announced more plans to further tighten down and now limit nearly all rare earth mineral and magnet exports, not just to the United States, but to virtually the entire world, especially the Western world. And President Trump reacted to that by threatening 100, an additional 100% tariff on goods coming from China on November 1st if China continued to implement these restrictions. Well, on the last week of October, we received, we heard that there was an agreement that had been reached between China and the United States that it would suspend its restrictions on the exports of rare earth minerals and magnets for one year and in return for the United States not implementing its 100% additional tariffs on top of what it additional already had in place. And some other things were thrown in there, like the imports of 12 million metric tons of, of soybeans over uh, the purchase over the next couple of months, and uh, another 25 million metric tons per year in each of the three successive years. And also there was agreement uh, on implementing or importing other com ag commodities as well as energy commodities as well. The details of that are still being worked on. We still don't have a signed agreement and that's starting to make the world kind of nervous right now, the markets in particular kind of nervous. Now, uh, as we look at what's happening here now, and China's starting to implement this suspension, shall we say, is they're developing a new application and licensing process. They already had an application and licensing process that was creating many of the problems, but now it's a new licensing and processing uh, application process, according to sources being reported by Reuters. And it may take months to develop this. In other words, continuing to squeeze the supply of rare earth minerals and magnets that are out there. If you look back at the process they've had in place already, over the last six months, Reuters reports that European Union firms have submitted over 2,000 or roughly 2,000 applications. And six months later, only about half have been accepted. 
and from um, what we hear from private industry in order to be able to be granted this opportunity to receive these rare earth minerals and magnets, they have to provide very detailed plans of how they're used in the manufacturing process and including pictures that risk giving away proprietary secrets on the production process of these goods to China. And so all of it still very problematic overall uh, for many developed economies who are very dependent upon these rare earth minerals and magnets. So why does all of this matter? All of this matters is because because of the sensitivity now that China has the ability to pick winners and losers, both in the manufacturing world and which economies are going to be able to thrive in today's high-tech world, as well as in the defense world, as far as which countries are going to be able to have the advanced defense weapons. Uh, the world has to decide whether they're comfortable with China being in that position of choosing the winners and losers of our manufacturing economy and of our ability to defend ourselves. The world's going to have to de decide. And China's already very much slow walking this process, putting on significant restrictions, saying, we're, oh, we're, but we're allowing it. You just have to apply for a license, but a very restrictive licensing process that risks giving away proprietary manufacturing secrets. And still, it's expected that it's going to be extremely difficult for any firm to be able to get a license to import rare earth minerals and magnets from China if it's involved in any way with the defense industry and in making defense weapons of any kind or sort. And so China's still picking winners and losers from that standpoint. Why is all this important? Because this is the most sensitive, critical part of the trade agreement. This is the most critical part. It has to do with national security. You're not going to hear President Trump or any other Western world leader talk about their vulnerabilities because of these restrictions, because they don't want to publicly state how vulnerable they are in the inability to produce um, defense weapons. So they're not going to talk about that. Now, how does this play in with the Supreme Court hearing this week? President Trump was able to get the agreement that he reached because of the threat of the 100% tariffs on China if it continued to restrict these rare earth minerals and magnet exports. China came across with this agreement, softening the tone, etc., at the time of the Supreme Court hearing. The Supreme Court is expected to rule in an expedited schedule, which may mean by the end of the year. If, in fact, and the odds makers now are giving significant odds toward President Trump losing this case, he is still expected to try other legal paths to keep tariffs in place to be able to do tariffs, but it will limit his ability to be able to quickly put tariffs in place. China could come back then at that point with restrictions and President Trump would be more handcuffed than what he was before in trying to use leverage to get them to apply these. Now, in the meantime, what President Trump is doing is investing in companies who mine and process rare earth minerals, both here and in Greenland. He's, developed, he's signed trade agreements with, country, with Greenland, uh, with um, Australia, and uh, with one or two other countries to try to provide rare earth minerals. All of that takes time. Depending on the product, one to three years is kind of a common theme of what I hear for developing this. This leaves us vulnerable in the meantime. This is an area where I expect the most risk of China not complying, and therefore that's the area that I see the greatest risk of trade agreements falling apart. The markets are starting to get skeptical of China buying the 12 million metric tons of U.S. soybeans between now and the end of the year. We're simply not seeing much progress, but frankly, we don't know for sure because the partial government shutdown removes our ability to see the daily flash export sales reports and the weekly export sales reports. But looking at the spreads, looking at the basis market, we don't see evidence of significant purchases 
yet at this point, although we know that there have been some modest purchases likely by the state grain buyer, Sinograin, which goes into their reserve. We'll continue to keep you updated on these developments. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to continue to receive these updates from the trading floor.